the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome, everyone, to Our Lady of Las Vegas Church today. Today we come together to celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. Together with the entire church, we continue in our great celebration of this wonderful miracle of our lives, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and the very reason that we are Christians, because of the fact that he is risen and that he is with us. We come here today and we thank all of you for being with us wherever you are to join with us in prayer as we come together with our risen Lord on this first day of the week, on this day of the, the resurrection, to praise God for the gift of his Son, for giving us the gift of salvation, and for welcoming us into his holy family and giving us the gift of eternal life. Let us prepare now to come into communion with Christ in this Eucharist as we acknowledge our sins and as we ask God for mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the captain and the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, 
we must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The Sanhedrin ordered the apostles to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismiss them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked and heard the voices of many angels who surrounded the throne, and the living creatures and the elders. They were countless in number, and they cried out in a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches, wisdom and strength, honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in the heaven and on earth, and under the earth, and in the sea. Everything in the universe cry out. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor, glory and might, forever and ever. The four living creatures answered, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. 
At that time, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas, called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two, other, two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And they said to him, We also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were, not more, they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. And Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of 153 large fish. And even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared ask to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized that it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him, Simon Peter, a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything, and you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. This is a wonderful time of the year that we celebrate Easter and the resurrection of Jesus. And the church is taking us through the early stages of the church after the resurrection. And, and now the disciples are seeing Jesus risen and gaining this, this uh, experience of, of seeing him so that they can be witnesses to, to show the world that Jesus truly is risen and that he is the Messiah. And today we have the third uh, time that Jesus came to the disciples after his resurrection, and he comes to them when they're on the Sea of Galilee, they're fishing. And interestingly enough, this was this kind of takes us back to the first time that the disciples saw Jesus when they were out fishing and they caught nothing, and Jesus says, put your nets in the water, and they caught a bunch of fish, so much that their boat was in danger of sinking. And that's when the disciples started to follow Jesus. Now we have him here after the resurrection. Jesus is there, although they didn't know it was him yet, he told them to put the net into the water for a catch. And they pulled in so many that, that again, 
it was difficult for them to maneuver. And John even tells us that there were 153 of these large fish in that net. So There's a lot of detail for the scriptures uh, to, to mention that. But what is important today is, is when Jesus speaks with Peter. It's something that we need to look at. Simon Peter, whom Jesus made the head of his church, whom he gave the keys of the kingdom of heaven and said, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church, and you have the keys, and what you declare bound in heaven will be bound on earth. But Peter failed. God doesn't expect us to always be perfect. We can't be because we're not. And even the disciples that Jesus called to himself failed. When Jesus was arrested, they ran away. And Peter, as Jesus told them what would happen, denied him. Jesus said, this very night before, you, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. You will deny that you know me three times. At the time, Peter didn't believe that. But when it actually happened, he did. And now today we have this scenario where Jesus is speaking with, with Peter and he's asking Peter, Simon, do you love me? Not once, not twice, but three times. Did you ever think about that? Why, why Jesus had asked Peter three times if he loved him? So we, we can see here a, a correspondence with the, those three times that Jesus or that Peter denied Jesus. But when we read this, we're of course reading this in the English language, and we know that that the scriptures were not written in English. And so there's a little bit of a uh, maybe a, perhaps a, an under, misunderstanding. It's not as clear if we read the scriptures back in the original languages. Peter responds, yes, Lord, I, I, I love you. And this is Peter's confession of, of, of uh, love to, to the Lord. And in English, it's easy to see, his, see that this is all good. But in Greek, it becomes clearer that this is Peter's confession of, of, of guilt, his confession that, that he realizes that he fell. In Greek... In the Greek Bible, there are just different words that describe the English word love. We have the word love, right? But in Greek, there are, there are actually three words, and they have different meanings. There's the word eros, which means uh, a more sensual, romantic kind of love, the kind of, that would lead to marriage. And then we have philia, which means love that's uh, to the things that are likable to us. Uh, it's an admiration or a devotion to, to someone or something, somebody worthy of, of, of our admiration, uh, uh, such as a love for a hero or, or our, our parents, our siblings, love of art or something like that. It's uh, filial love is, is, a, is a likable love that reflects what I find worthy of liking and that returns something back to me. And then, finally, there's agape, Agape love, which means self-sacrificing and unconditional. It's uh, even for a person, loving a person that may not even deserve it. And when there is nothing tangible to be gained from loving that way, that's agape love. And agape love is, is in the will. It's, it's, it's a decision that we all make. So Jesus, in this scripture, if we read it from the Greek, when he's asking Peter, do you love me, he's really saying, do you have agape love for me? Are you, are, you, are you willing to give your entire self for me? Do you love me that much? Do you love me in such a manner to sacrifice your own life for me? And Peter knows that he did not live up to that. He wasn't ready to, to, to live up to that standard of love. He knows that he disowned Jesus. He denied him uh, in order to save himself. So how does... Peter answer? Well, he answers that he loves Jesus, but not agape love. He answers the philia love. Yes, Lord, I have philia love for you, meaning, yes, Lord, you know that I do love you and I, 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 I admire you so much. And you see why this is a confession of, of, of Peter's failure. 
Peter is saying to Jesus, yes, I, I love you and I admire you, but I have not been able to love you with a self-sacrificing love that you demand of me. So Jesus asks him a second time, do you love me? Do you have agape love for me? And Peter again replies only that he has philia love for him, which means is that love that, that, that it's a powerful love, but not that love yet that's, that's there to, to sacrifice his own life. And so finally, Jesus the third time says, well, do you have the philia love for me? Do you love me in that way? And Peter responds, yes, I have that filial love for you. And so that was the end of Jesus' questioning. So Jesus accepts Peter in the way he is. And that type of love, that extent of love that Peter has for him, has to be enough, at least for the time being. Now, Peter, we know, is not a, he was not a loudmouth, boastful man who thought that he was better than any of the other disciples, but he was a a wise, a humble man who would not claim to give more than he could deliver. So Peter's confession here can be likened to the, the father of that possessed boy that we read about in the scriptures who said, I have faith, Lord, but, but, but I'm trying to believe, so help my, help my uh, unbelief. And when Peter is saying, what Peter is saying here, yes, I love you, Lord, but not in the way I know I should. Help my lack of love. But Jesus accepts that. He accepts that from Peter. So Peter's example invites us to bring our, this weak side of, that we all have to God, to bring that weak side of ourselves to God for healing. So today, let us join Peter in his confession. Yes, I love you, Lord, but help my lack of love. I don't have that love yet that which you require of me. I'm trying and I want to, but help my lack of love. You know, in talking about agape love, which is, which is the highest and most pure form of love, that unconditional love, you know, I really believe that, that dogs give the prime example, the prime example of unconditional love. And if you don't believe me, just ask the man who accidentally locked his wife and his dog in the garage for an entire day. And when he finally came home at the end of the day and he opened the garage door, which of those two, the dog or his wife, which of those two do you think was the most happy to see him? Please join with me now as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from life, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the Lord of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, for it to the resurrection of the dead, and life of the world to come. Amen. While we rejoice in Jesus' victory over death and his promise of eternal life, we are aware of the sadness and suffering that yet pervades our lives here on earth. Therefore, let us now bring to mind our needs and those of all our brothers and sisters, making, placing them in the hands of the Father who raises from the dead. For Pope Francis and all who provide leadership in the church, that they may witness to their love of the Lord in the way they exercise their ministry, drawing all to the source of love and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the innocent who suffer the ravages of hatred, 
terrorism, and war, especially in Ukraine, that there may be an end to violence in their homes, in our communities, and in our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those in authority over others, that they may be models of wisdom, respect, and gentleness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For those who have recently been initiated into the church, and for those who are making their first communion this Easter season, that they may always find nourishment at the table of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, that we may tend to each other with love of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the, all those who have been called into eternity, that redeemed and forgiven, they may live in glory of the kingdom of heaven forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Mary de Luciano, from whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of glory and might, we praise you for your love and mercy, which fill our world like a net filled with fish, expanding to fill our every need. Grant the prayers that we offer you today in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is risen and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for all good and all of his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. 
But with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is now renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, Father, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as together we now acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and you are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George Leo, our Bishop, Gregory, our Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, Father, welcome them into the light of your face, and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Peter, and all the saints who have pleased you, Father, throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now at our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, together let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, Lord, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us share with each other a sign of peace. Behold the risen Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those called now to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries 
may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for celebrating this Mass on this third Sunday of Easter. And we continue our celebration with the entire church, res- the, 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 the celebration of the risen Lord, the resurrection of Jesus, our Easter joy. I thank all of our ministers who assisted at Mass today, Teresa, our, our elect, or Mikhail, for controlling our cameras, and of course, Eva and Dave, lifting us up in music as beautifully as they do always. Thank you so very much for that. We are beginning the month of May. This is the first of May, and and the month that is dedicated to the Blessed Mother. And so let us be mindful of the fact that that Mary is our mother. Jesus gave her to us to guide us and to help us on our journey as Christian people. She was there under the cross as Jesus died. Jesus gave Mary to us at that time as our mother, as she said, Woman, behold your son. And John took Mary as into her home in our name. And so Mary is our mother as well. And so we're very happy that Mary watches over us, guides us, and leads us to her son each and every day. And so especially during this month of May, let us have partic- pay a particular attention to Mary and honor her as our beloved mother. And so if anyone is celebrating a birthday or anniversary or something special going on in their life this coming week, our best wishes to you. And as always, if you have more serious issues that that are weighing heavy on your heart, please know that our prayers are with you. And this time of Easter joy is always there to lift us up from the sorrows of Good Friday. And so until the time we meet again, thank you for joining us, and may God be with you. The Lord be with you. And And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is now ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Jesus Christ is risen today.